Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about resin structures and how if you have more than one possible Lewis structure for the same molecule, uh, how we kind of deal with that, okay? So when you're dealing with the with the molecule that has more than one possible Lewis structure, so let's take kind of carbon dioxide for example. Uh, if we draw up carbon dioxide, we know that we have carbon in the center and we have two oxygens on either side of it and we get this double bond between it and we get these two electrons on either side of the oxygen like that, okay? Now that's one possible resonant structure of carbon dioxide. The second resonant structure of carbon dioxide is if we have the carbon with a single bond and a triple bond over here as such. Okay, So since both of these things are possible uh, for carbon dioxide, they are two different resonant structures. Okay, There's actually a third resonant structure for carbon dioxide also. So you have this triple bond right in here that we see, and then we have a single bond right here. However, if we were to draw it up like this with a triple bond on this side and a single bond on this side, that would be its carbon dioxide's third resonant structure. Okay. Now you may be thinking, really, what's the difference between these two things, between this one here and this one here? Because they essentially are the same, it's just the bonds on the other side. And you're absolutely right, they are essentially the same. But if you think about it, if we actually number our oxygens as oxygen number one versus oxygen number two, we see that if you do that, there really is a difference here because here the triple bond's in a different on a different oxygen versus over here. So there is a difference there. Okay? So what we do is when you have a molecule that has double and triple bonding in it, okay, so you need to have double bonds or triple bonds to create a resonance structure. When you have that, uh, we need to represent those resonance structures. So the way we do that is we take this um, molecule and get rid of this. Okay, it won't let me. Uh, <clears throat> if we take this molecule and to show that um, we have resonance to that, or there's more than one possibility, we actually draw up all three possibilities. Okay, so if, for example, in an assessment, or if you're working on a worksheet, or working on something that you need to turn in or represent to people, uh, if you're asked to show all the possible resonance structures, we would show all three of these for carbon dioxide. Now, one last piece of the puzzle you would do is between each one of them, what you would do is you would put a little arrow showing that they all are possible. So we'd put these little arrows in between and then it's not required but you can also bracket them okay uh, bracketing them then kind of helps kind of keep that all together keep it all in one spot for that so here we see the three different resonant structures for carbon dioxide okay now typically with resonant structures um, you have more than one possibility and then if you look at this we may start asking ourselves a question well of these resonant structures which of these is actually the one that is most likely, or what is the one that's going to happen most predominantly in nature, or which one is the most plausible resin structure. Sometimes there's really no difference. Okay, so between between our options two and three here, there really is no difference in terms of what's going on. But we do definitely see a difference between having two double bonds inside of here versus a triple and a single. So is this first one the best one, or are these two down here the more likely one that carbon dioxide is going to form? Well, it turns out in this case, the most likely one is this top one. And that kind of comes down to the way that oxygen wants to bond with its valence electrons and the way that carbon wants to bond with its valence electrons, okay? We will have a way to actually solve for this using something called formal charges in an upcoming video. All right, so for now, we take a look at it and we actually can see that that, that one probably would be the most likely one. But without using this thing called formal charges, um, you wouldn't know for sure what is the most likely of those different resonance structures within that, okay? So let's take a look at um, one more example of this. So if we go to so if we go to SO2, or if we go to sulfur dioxide, uh, and sulfur dioxide, okay. So if we draw this up, and this is one that we've done as practice before, sulfur gets a double bond here, a single bond here, as such, but its resonance structure with this, or its possible resonance structure, would be to have that double bond on the other side, oops, I forgot a set of electrons here, on the other side of the sulfur. So what we see is we have the double bond over here versus the double bond over here in our molecule. Okay. Now, this resonance structure for sulfur dioxide, if you look at it, there is not going to be one that's preferred over the other because they are the same in terms of 
um, just being a double bond moved to a different location. Now, what chemists did is they said, okay, so is that kind of the way the world works? They kind of were wondering, well, what's really going on here? Because we have two different possibilities here within our sulfur dioxide, does the double bond stay on one? Does the double bond jump back and forth between the two? Um, or what really is going on inside of this molecule? So they looked. So basically what we did is we used an um, electron microscope, something that can actually measure the distance between our different uh, bonds. So between this sulfur and this oxygen, we actually measured this distance between there. And what's interesting is, if you take a look at our bonds, um, if you have a single bond, a single bond is going to be longer than a double bond. And a double bond is longer than a triple bond. So these are going to be really long, and these are going to be really short, okay? So if we go back to our previous one, if, if this molecule keeps the double bond on one side and the other side has a single bond, we should see that the spacing between this oxygen and this sulfur should be longer than the spacing between those two. Okay, so if you view that and look at it and say, okay, what we should see is one side shorter than the other, the other side longer. Okay, or maybe what we see is it resonates back and forth. So one side is long for a little while, and then it kind of switches and becomes shorter, and that bond actually jumps back and forth, where we see the double bond resonating back and forth between the sides. That's where the term resonance structure comes from, is this idea that this double bond is going to resonate on either side of the sulfur and kind of jump back and forth depending on time. Okay, that's what the original hypothesis was, is that there's going to be some resonating going on here. Now, what really happened, which is interesting, is that when they measured this, they, um, they didn't actually see either of those effects. What they saw is that the sulfur was equal distance to both sides of the oxygen. There was no difference in length. So from here to here and from here to here, they were equal to each other. Okay. Now, at first, that sounds like, oh, wait a minute, then there can't be a double bond and a single bond. But the conclusion from this is actually the fact that that double bond we have isn't on one side or the other. It doesn't really resonate. In fact, it actually, what we say, delocalizes, or it actually kind of sits on both sides at the same time. And you'll sometimes see kind of a dotted line kind of drawn in there to represent that. Okay. So, what happens is that double bond, because it can be in more than one location and there's more than one resonance structure, it actually delocalizes, or we say it kind of be, is shared across the entire molecule versus just one side or the other. So we get a sharing effect across the entire molecule for that delocalized electron. Okay. Now the hard thing is how do you draw that? Okay. So what we've kind of decided as a community is that we're not going to do that. We're not going to try to draw that delocalized electron. Um, just for our sake in keeping it the same, we're still going to use this methodology right here to draw up the possible resin structure. So by putting them together and bracketing in this and saying that this is the possible resonance structures, we're saying that this double bond that's inside of here actually kind of sits on both sides at the same time. Thus, we draw them up together. Okay. So kind of take home here is that there are more than one possibilities for these different molecules. Those different possibilities we call resonance structures. And to write them up, we draw, we draw all the possibilities separated by an, a double-headed arrow. Um, but in reality, when you do have resonance structures that are equal in terms of their possibilities in nature, that kind of a conglomeration of both of those are really what's, what's occurring. Okay. However, if we go back to our carbon dioxide, and we look at this, if you were to walk, look at this one under a scope, you're going to see that this version of it is what we see in nature. We really don't see uh, these things, those two resonance structures happen. So for things like carbon dioxide where there is an obvious difference there, um, we can pick which one is the predominant one within our system. Okay, So we've seen the two different resonance structures on these here. Okay. Um, what we're going to do as in practice in class, but I'll show it to you also here in the video, is three more resonance structures that we see on the screen. So the NO2, the O3, and the CO, the CO3 2 minus. So you can get a chance to actually practicing drawing up the different resonance structures and how they would look. Okay, so go ahead uh, at this point in time, if you want to do some practice, pause the video for a second and practice doing the resonance structures for these three, and then in a second I will show you the answers to them. Okay, so we now have our 
practice done in. So if you take a look, here's your three possibilities for your resonance structures for NO2. Um, the graphic I pulled offline didn't put the arrow between, so there should be an arrow between these here. Uh, here is your O3, the two different possibilities for that. And then finally, your carbon dioxide. Noticing how that the charge is identified on this as a negative two for all three places where that double bond could be. Okay. Now notice here they actually draw these off kind of in um, uh, thirds versus being in quadrants, and that's acceptable. You can do that if you do have three things coming off of a center. Um, that is perfectly fine. It's also perfectly fine to put a bend in it up here, like you see for these examples. It's just ways of just kind of kinking it or making it look a little bit more realistic. Okay. All right, guys, that is resonance structures. Uh, our next video will talk about how we actually can calculate the most common or the best resonance structure by using some called formal chargers. Thank you.